In the darkness we were waiting Without hope, without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt Welcome everyone to Arrington Old Parish Church Service Online Worship. It's good to have you join with me wherever you have gathered. And I do hope you enjoy worshipping with us. And remember that no matter who you are, there is always a place for you here within this worshipping community. For this is a place of grace and not perfection. And all are welcome. And as we continue our journey through Lent towards Easter, and this being the fifth Sunday in Lent, then I think we can say, as the moderator of the Church of Scotland says, we are getting there. And maybe that just about sums up where we are as church and country as we're working our way through the pandemic. We are getting there. 
The problem is though, we're not quite sure what there is going to be and how is life going to be look, to look on the far side of all of this. But we're getting there and don't give up hope. And perhaps we need to remember the experience of the Israelites making their way through the wilderness towards the promised land. Not exactly knowing where they were going either. Not exactly knowing what they would find when they got there. And yet God led, led them by a pillar of cloud through the day and by fire by night. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, wherever you have gathered, let us continue to trust the same God to lead us through all of these present challenges. And with that in mind, let us worship God. Today's scripture reading is from John chapter 12, verses 20 to 33. Some Greeks seek Jesus. Some Greeks were among those who had gone to Jerusalem to worship during the festival. They went to Philip, he was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said, Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and the two of them went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has now come for the Son of Man to receive great glory. I am telling you the truth. A grain of wheat remains no more than a single grain unless it is dropped into the ground and dies. If it does die, then it produces many grains. Those who love their own life will lose it. Those who hate their own life in this world 
will keep it for life eternal. Whoever wants to serve me must follow me, so that my servant will be with me where I am, and my father will honour anyone who serves me. Then Jesus speaks about his death. Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Shall I say, Father, do not let this hour come upon me, but that is why I came, so that I might go through this hour of suffering. Father, bring glory to your name. Then a voice spoke from heaven. I have brought glory to it, and I will do so again. The crowd standing there heard the voice, and some of them said it was thunder, while others said, an angel spoke to him. But Jesus said to them, It was not for my sake that this voice spoke, but for yours. Now is the time for this world to be judged. Now the ruler of this world will be overthrown. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to me. In saying this, he indicated the kind of death he was going to suffer. Amen. Thanks be to God. There is a story about a minister trying to convince someone who was curious to know all about religion and church life and why people would be interested in becoming a Christian. And the minister tried to say to him to at least examine the claims of Jesus Christ. But the person brought up the usual argument. Well, minister, I come to your church, but there are just too many hypocrites that go there. And the minister looked that man right in the eye and said, of course any church worshipping community is full of people who are not perfect, but hey, don't let that keep you from coming. One more won't make or break us. Of course, my friends, the church is full of hypocrites. Of course, the church is full of broken people. Of course, the church is full of people who doubt, and that is perfectly okay. We wouldn't have it any other way, for the church community of faith is full of people from all walks of life, from all backgrounds, who are far from perfect, who are forever making mistakes. And there should be no barriers for anyone to come and worship in the faith community. And questions and, and curiosities are always welcome. And that is why you will hear in this church that this is a community of grace, not perfection, and that everyone is welcome. But what you have to understand is what makes us different from any groups that meet within our communities is that we have a relationship with Christ. We believe in his teachings and we try our best to live the life in his name. We try and practice his teachings, being more accepting towards others, putting the needs of our community first before ourselves. We try our very best and we often get it wrong, but we never give up. For we believe that as long as we live in this community, worship within this church, support this church and its people, we can, through our words and actions, be able in some way or another to bring a measure of Christ to those we encounter. And Christ is there to give us the strength to live and in that living, give us the strength to show others who we are and we can be, each of us, called to be in a relationship with Christ. And through that relationship with Christ, we will find the power to live life among all the brokenness in which we encounter each day. It is Christ's love for us which enables each of us to carry on. Yet to reach that stage in our own faith journey, we have to ask questions, seek answers, take ownership of our doubts and our curiosities about faith, about Jesus Christ, about God and the scriptures. There is an old saying, curiosity kills a cat. Yet for people of faith and those beginning their faith journey, curiosity is a key to enlightenment. It is a key to endless possibilities. And curiosity is the key element of today's passage. 
which Muriel read for us. And we read now, now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. And as we know from history, that the Greeks were known for curiosity. They loved to travel, study places, as well as the natural world, to find things out. Many of them were born seekers after the truth. And it was unusual to find a Greek, it wasn't unusual, sorry, to find a Greek who was searching the truth, studying philosophy and religion, and going from teacher to teacher in the search for answers. So this group of Greeks first approached Philip with a simple request, which was simply to see Jesus. And as you know, Philip was a Greek name. And although he was Jewish, he would have encountered the Greek community within his lifetime. So they had something in common with him. And that enabled them to turn to Philip to ask if they could meet the new celebrity in Jerusalem. To the Greeks, Philip was their only way to access Jesus, for they couldn't enter into the temple. To do so would have made the temple unclean. So they had no option but to stand outside the temple in the court of the Gentiles, the area in which Jesus had driven the traders from the temple court. And perhaps they wished to know more of a man who could do things like this. For the Greeks, and like many folk within our society, to gain a better insight about the person of Jesus Christ, we ask the people who are closest to them, or even ask if they could introduce us to them personally. Those being followers of Jesus Christ, whether it be in the first century times, or even modern times today. And whether you believe it or not, those of us who define ourselves as Christians are part of of that story and it's our role our ministry to bring that story alive to those who long to know more and we are part of that story for Jesus says whoever wants to serve me must follow me so that my servant will be with me where I am and my father will honor anyone who serves me we too are called to serve to be inquisitive to be curious, to take time to dwell in the scriptures, for if we didn't, it would be so easy for us to get lost on this journey of faith. And through this season of Lent towards the cross, what feeds our faith would be lost. And especially during this season and through this pandemic, if we didn't take time with Christ, we would miss out on strengthening our relationship with him during these challenging years And even now, we would miss out on the highs and lows of Holy Week. We would miss out on the triumphant entry. The angry, frustrated Jesus. The betrayal by his friends. The crucifixion. The fearful disciples. The empty tomb. The journey on the road to Emmaus. We would miss out on the true Jesus revealing himself to us through all of these events. If we stopped being curious, if we stopped asking questions. So yes, we must continue to be curious, to be determined to learn more about the Christian faith, to enable all of us to serve Christ and follow his teachings in order for each one of us to make disciples, to bring people to faith from all walks of life. And I know that many people find it difficult to walk the journey of faith because of who they believe they are. So I want to offer this invitation to all who are watching, to all of you who feel that you can never have that relationship with Christ because of your past, because of your sexuality, because of your mistakes that you have made, that you could not be part of a faith community such as this church because of who you are. And if you feel that way, let me say this to all of you. If you're longing for a relationship with Christ, then this is the place to be. You should feel right at home within this worshipping community. 
For there are no perfect people here. We are all saints and sinners, and there is a place here for you. So to all of you, whether you're a saint or a sinner, rich or poor, black or white, gay or straight, male or female, young or old, there is a place here for you in this faith community, in this Christ family, and you are welcome. So continue to ask questions, continue to dwell in the scriptures, continue to be curious about the journey of faith. And come and join each one of us wherever we have gathered and whenever we become back into, move back into this building. Remember that there is a place here for you in this community of faith, in Christ's family, and you are welcome. Amen.
let us pray. Loving Lord, we thank you for the signs of spring that are now all around us and for the reassurance that you are faithful through every season of life. As we move ever nearer to Easter, we thank you for hope, for the hope of new life and for the hope that in your strength we will overcome all the challenges that beset us. So hear us as we pray in particular for those who are struggling right now to find much cause for hope. Those whose mental health has deteriorated throughout the months of the pandemic. Those who see no way out of the grinding poverty that's beset them and is evident all around them in their communities. Those who have been affected by the virus themselves having been ill or having lost loved ones are not having been able to visit loved ones in care homes or who are shielding. O oh Lord, these have been tough times. We've had all kinds of reasons to despair. And yet with you, darkness gives way to light, winter to spring. And yes, despair to hope. So come, we pray, and be close to all those who are just getting by and no more. Those who need to know that you are near and that you will never leave us nor forsake us. So come, loving Lord, we pray. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, my friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ, it's good to have you join with me wherever you have gathered. And our time is just about over, and I do hope you've enjoyed worshipping with us. Can I also remind you to keep in touch through our social media pages and our website for, for, regu for details of how we are planning to reopen the church when the time comes. So keep an eye out for those updates as well. But in the meantime... Remember to stay in touch either through phone or email or whatever. And, and I do hope that you have a blessed week um, which is coming ahead. So my friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ, until we meet again, remember to stay safe, stay well, stay connected with each other and with God and go in peace and may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you, those whom you love and those whom you struggle to love now and forevermore. Amen.
just never end.